Well, let me start with saying congratulations on taking the first step. My name is Dave Bratcher, and I have the privilege of serving as the president of the Star Center, where for the last 32 years, we've been walking alongside families who have a member of their family with a disability. And that includes everything from, from birth all the way to the end of life and all the points in between. And so today, I am excited to share with you a little more detail as it relates to the transition from school to life that your child is about to go through. You know, as a parent, this is a super important phase in the life of a child, that regardless if the child has a disability or not, but those with disabilities, there are some extra steps that are critical in transitioning out of school and, and into life. And what does life mean? Well, it can mean lots of different things, and those are some of the things we're going to work through today. The, the thing that I want to tell you, though, is you are a fighter. You have unbelievable persistence, and you've got a never-give-up attitude. And so why do I tell you that? Well, I just want to remind you that while this path can sometimes seem challenging, you have exactly what it takes to make it through this, and your child is going to be forever grateful for the work that you put in during this season so that their life, their dreams, their hopes can be realized. And the work you put in now is going to pay off 10 times as we move down this path to success. And so what we're looking at here is, uh, again, just a PDF download. And I wanted to start with step one. And sometimes step one gets mixed up with step two or step three. Your child is unique. And I know you know that, but this is just a reminder. Often the system, whether that's the special ed system, whether that is the, the system within state government as it relates to disability services, the system is built to treat everyone the same. And look, I'm all for equity and I'm all for sameness, but... If we do not recognize that your child is unique, then this transition process is going to be a disaster. And so where we have to start is asking questions. Who is your child? In other words, what makes your child unique? What are they interested in? What are their skills? What are their abilities? What do they want to be when they grow up? If you're anything like me, you're still maybe asking yourself that question. And so your child is no different. You know, in a system where IEP meetings become, you know, the thing that you, you, you love to hate, this is a critical thing that often those IEP meetings are not going to uncover. The other thing is, how does your child learn? Are they an experiential, you know, they, they want to experience things and that's how they really retain stuff? Um, maybe they uh, need pictures. They, they do better with visual things versus lots of words on a page. And finally, you know, this is a, this, the reason this question's on here, this third question, and again, there's lots of questions. This is just the starting point, but... What are your child's hopes and dreams? I was recently talking with a mom, and her 22-year-old son looked at her and said, Mom, nobody ever asked me what my hopes and dreams were. And so there's a great reminder that we are trying to find the hopes and the dreams of our children and one way that we can do that is simply by asking them. And so that is super important. But the idea here is we're always going to start with the individual and then work our way out from there. And so one of the things that, that's mentioned here as it relates to tools needed is an assessment. And this is going to be an assessment that's going to, it's going to identify the intellectual abilities, the adaptive abilities. But more importantly than that, 
this, this assessment needs to be something that you as the parent understand. You know, a lot of times in disability services arena, we use a lot of words that only we can understand. That doesn't mean that we're smarter than anybody else. It just means that this is the language of the work that we do. But often parents don't have a clue about a lot of these words. and So the assessment has to be able to be understood by you. If it's not, then it's no good. Okay? It's no good. So let's go on to step two. Step two is where we're going to start branching out. And, and we're going to let those interests and those skills and abilities feed into kind of the next step. And we need to start asking questions. Can my child live independently? Well, the answer might be yes, right off the bat. And so if that's the case, then there's not a lot of research that needs to be done here. If you're not sure, then there's definitely some things that need to be explored during this phase. Also, doing a, a notice the tools needed. It says social networking map. Here's what I want you to understand. This is not um, anything to do with Facebook or Twitter or WhatsApp or TikTok or what, whatever the new thing is. This has to do with what is the friend network? What, what does that look like in their life? Uh, how many friends do they have? Is it easy for them to make friends? Uh, because, again, those questions and those answers are really going to point towards some areas that we may need to do some work. Um, and, and really unpack that. Another critical piece is, do they know how to manage their own money? Because if not, then we know what challenges that's going to present. And so, again, this is, if, you, if you're following with us, step one is, is solely focused on the individual interests, desires, abilities. And then we, we branch out from there and go, okay, here are the interests, here's the abilities, here's what we believe, the track we're on. What, what do we need to add to support that um, so that that can become a reality? And so that's really the focus there uh, on step two. Now, let's move on down to step three. So step three is where we're going to get super specific. So let's say somebody is interested in landscaping. Okay, well, let's pursue that. What skills are going to be needed to be successful in landscaping? Well, probably need to go find a landscaper. Probably need to talk to somebody that's in that business. Um, and so we're going to be able to understand the skills that are going to be needed by talking to somebody that's in the business. The same would be true if we're talking about a mechanic, being an accountant, um, being a veterinary tech Whatever the dream is, there are folks that are currently doing that that we need to seek out and learn from. The other thing is, what does your child need to know? In other words, there's some skills that need to be learned, but is there anything that, that needs to happen before we start learning those specific skills? For example, um, do they need to know how to measure things, right? So if, if we're talking about landscaping, do they need to understand uh, the importance, if we're fertilizing, how much do we use? If we're spraying Roundup to kill weeds, um, can we spray it anywhere? Uh, how much water is mixed with a certain piece amount of Roundup so that we get the effective outcome that we're looking for? And then the other question is, is your child going to need any daily supports? So, for example... Um, Currently, they're going to school from 8 to 3. When they're at school, do they have anybody helping them do daily living activities? For example, do they need assistance in toileting? Do they need assistance in eating? Because graduating from high school is not going to remove this need for these supports. And so those are the questions that we've got to start asking because, again, we start with the individual, then we look at, at rounding out the supports that are going to be needed, and then we start looking at job-specific things and, and really unpacking that so that we've got a map that we can follow. And, you know, some of the tools needed here would be vocational rehabilitation, which those are, that's a state agency. In whatever state you live in, there's a vocational rehabilitation department. Um, the local school system, talking to post-secondary counselors, 
um, those that, that are in disability services and understanding, because the, the big thing here is there are requirements on K-12 school systems. So your local school system has requirements in the area of disability services. When we get to post-secondary, it totally changes. And, and that is where the student, your child, has to be their own advocate. And so understanding right now, what are some of those things that we need to be preparing for if my child wants to go to college and, and we believe that there's a, a chance that they could succeed in college, what are the supports that are available? Because they're not going to just show up and, and deliver all of those supports. Um, the student is going to have to lead that effort. Um, so the, the final thing there and the tools needed are job shadows. And that's really where we come back to what specific skills are going to be needed. And, you know, a funny story about me, I thought I wanted to be an engineer and I, I did a lot of job shadowing and actually paid work in the summers leading up to graduating high school that would support me being an engineer. And when I got to college, it was during freshman orientation week that I decided engineering was not for me. And I changed my major literally three days into college to accounting. And so when that happened, all of those experiences, they weren't lost, but they weren't nearly as important as they once were. And so anyway, these three steps are going to set you up to help your child realize their hopes and dreams in a way that you have never maybe even thought was possible. But I'm just telling you, we've walked with thousands of families, thousands of moms and dads who started at the same place. They didn't know where to start. And so this, again, this is not the final, this is not the be all end all, but it is a very tactical place to start. And let me just tell you, you are many steps ahead of most families because you've taken this step. I look forward to hearing back great results from this work. And uh, I just want to let you know, you are doing super important work and it's going to have a lifetime of impact on your child. So from them to you, thanks.